Um, I hope that everybody had their coffee and hopefully uh, by the time of this presentation you'll walk away invigorated and in knowing that APPs can do that. APPs can do independent procedures and you can do it too in your practice. So thank you very much for this opportunity for us to present. And we're going to go ahead and get started with uh, we have no disclosures or commercial support for this endeavor. And then uh, more importantly, one, we wanted to go ahead and acknowledge our team because without our bladder physicians and our multi, multidisciplinary team, we would not have been able to uh, complete this endeavor. So we want to give a shout out to all of our uh, colleagues as well as the nurses and the MAs at MD Anderson who made this project possible. So a little background. So bladder cancer is one of the most common cancers in the United States and one of the most expensive cancers to treat over the lifespan. So with that said, the role of the advanced practice provider in urology has also expanded where we are now billing more for office cystoscopies. So this is not a novel concept. The British Association of Urology Nurses and Surgeons have had published education and training on this since the year 2000. So in, uh, in, in alignment of what we do in the US, we're kind of catching up here. So the significance of this um, is with our aging population and the population of our seasoned urologists, uh, the average age of a urologist is about 53 in the United States. So with this fact, there is true enough a shortage of urology providers, and this is where advanced provi practice providers are, po are poised to uh, be an ideal, in the ideal position to fill in the gaps. So uh, with this said as well, APPs have been shown to be effective in providing urology care as well as having positive reviews with patient satisfaction. So I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Sophia. Uh, so for this project, uh, we first saw and gained approval by our Quality Improvement Board. We then needed to determine the total time that the patient was on the table, both with the faculty and with the APP only. So we needed to define the start of the procedure. The start of the procedure is defined as when the lidocaine was inserted into the patient by the nurse, and the nurse then called the APP to inform them that the, that the uh, patient was ready. So the end time, the end of the procedure, is marked when the cystoscopy was, when the cystoscope was removed from the patient, and the procedure was then complete. These times we could not find were actually time stamped in EPIC or in probation, um, the systems that we use for our cystoscopies. So we actually had to take these uh, times manually and then document them into a device data sheet. That data was then transferred into an Excel file. So we also utilized data from a prior QI project that, was also, that also used some of the same data points, and then we transferred that information into Excel as well. So for this project, we wanted to assess the safety and the efficacy of, the, of implementation of an independent APP cystoscopy clinic with the goal to decrease the patient's time on table by 10%. So in implementing this, we, we then had to adjust our cystoscopy clinic flow map. So first we wanted to define the criteria of a patient that would qualify for an APP independent cystoscopy procedure. So patients who are TA low grade with no recurrence for one year, Patients who were CIS, TA high grade, and T1 high grade with no recurrence for three years, and then any hematuria workup, all of those patients would qualify for an independent, for an APP independent cystoscopy. So prior to the cystoscopy, the APP would evaluate the patient and see if they would actually qualify uh, for either an independent cysto or a, a cysto with the faculty. So if the patient met the criteria for an independent cystoscopy, then that patient, we would go ahead and perform the procedure without the faculty present. And during the procedure, we would actually have the capability of taking pictures. Those pictures would be pertinent areas, including the dome, the lateral walls, the trigone, the bilateral UOs, uh, the urethra, the, prostat the, prostatic urethra, the prostatic urethra. Also areas that are um, any other concerning areas that were found, we could take pictures of those. 
So if a tumor was found, then at that point we would call the physician, the physician would come into the room, investigate the area, and give us their input. Following an independent cystoscopy with no tumor, the procedure would be complete, the APP devised the follow-up plan, and the encounter is closed. If a tumor is found, then that patient would then proceed to the clinic for discussion. Um, passing the mic over to our um, to Marissa. Good morning, everyone. Um, next up, I'm excited to be presenting our results to you today. Our sample size was 92 surveillance cystoscopies, where 57% of these were completed independently by the APP versus 43% that were done with the physician present in the room. Our focus with respect to this QI project was on three different bladder surgeon cystoscopy clinics within our department. This graph depicts the average time our patients were on the procedure table for each of the three bladder surgeons clinics. The time on table is further broken down by all office procedures, um, cysto procedures represented in the gray columns versus cystos done with the physician in the room in blue versus cystos done by the APP independently seen in orange. The overall trend we are seeing here is that the time on table is reduced with APP independent cystoscopy in each of our three bladder clinics. Our most important slide here is showing our overall results that we were looking to measure. The average time on table for all 92 cystoscopies was 13.7 minutes overall with a breakdown average of 16.6 minutes with the physician in the room versus 10.8 minutes for APP independent cystos. There was an average of about six minutes of time saved on table per cysto case uh, with utilizing APP independently run procedures. For our QI project, the aim was to decrease time on table by 10%, as Sophia already stated. We vastly exceeded our goal by decreasing the time our patients are sitting in lithotomy, um, up in stirrups, awake on the procedure table, by a whopping 35%. Our group was also interested to see how this improved um, efficiency and workflow could affect the financial side of operations. What we found is there's a huge potential for increases in revenue stream by utilizing APP independent run cysto clinics for the purpose of bladder cancer surveillance. Our estimated calculations showed potential yearly increases in revenue of just below a million dollars when utilizing APP independent run clinics three days a week. Um, and increases of about 1.3 million if APP clinics are implemented four days a week. This slide is showing the estimated annual increases in the cost associated with running APP surveillance cysto clinics three and four days a week respectively, with cost increases being approximately 432K and 576K respectively. As you can see, the potential increases in revenue, revenue increases um, shown on the prior slide greatly surpass these increases in cost associated with utilizing APP independent run cysto clinics. This final graph today is comparing the estimated profit margins for cysto clinics with the physician in the room versus APP independent. The first two columns seen on the left represent three bladder surveillance days a week, and the second two columns on the far right um, represent four days a week. As you can see, there are substantial estimated increases in profit with utilizing APP independent cysto clinics. So the main takeaways here is with the time saved, um, the patients are waiting on the table in a single day, um, that time saved, there is the opportunity to add at least two to three additional cysto procedures to your daily surveillance schedule. Also, there's less disruption in the physician within their primary clinics. At MD Anderson, our model is that the cysto patients are scheduled on the same day as the physician's primary clinic day. 
Additionally, when the physician is out of the office, patients that do meet the criteria stated by Sophia earlier can still have their cystoscopy done when the AP, by the APP and not have to reschedule to later dates. The thought is that rescheduling procedures could lead to decreased patient satisfaction. And finally, um, these changes allow the opportunity for all of our bladder clinics to function at a fuller capacity um, and reduce unused template slots, which is essentially revenue lost. I'm gonna hand the mic over to Tamika. Good morning. Uh, so lessons learned. Um, during this whole process, we had to get organized. Uh, we elected our leader, Dr. Brandon Sterling here, um, and we also had weekly meetings. We checked in with each other, we're going over our process, making sure that everyone is on the same page, making changes as needed. Um, and then uh, this opened up a utilization. We had a third room that wasn't being utilized, and now it is, um, which goes back to Marissa's point in increasing the revenue. Uh, we did have to have a, a, a talk to our nursing colleagues. Uh, they were definitely our biggest champions in this whole thing because if the faster they move, the faster we can get the patient off the table. And they had to understand the goal in order for us to succeed in this uh, quality improvement. Uh, and then we also um, developed a way in EPIC to readily identify a patient without going through the chart and looking through 10 different um, data entries uh, to readily identify the patient as someone who qualifies for the surveillance cystoscopy with the APP only. And that was a new order and we had to do a process for that as well. Uh, next steps, um, as Sophia mentioned, we had to manually collect data, if you can imagine us putting this into a graph and then us developing our own um, uh, uh, bar graphs and things like that. So now we're going to utilize REDCap, where we still have to enter the data, but we can definitely have the data presented to us in different ways utilizing this uh, REDCap. Um, and we also have applied uh, for a, a research grant with the Bladder Cancer Advocacy Network um, to examine patient satisfaction and to also look at um, concordance, meaning does the APP and the physician see the same thing um, when they're surveilling the bladder in clinic? Um, and we're going to uh, definitely present this information wherever we're accepted. Um, and um, this is, is leading to our APP-led bladder cancer survivorship clinic at MD Anderson. Thank you.